Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another week here at Creators Call on YouTube. I am delighted to be spending time with you again today. Always a pleasure. I always enjoy it and look forward to it every week. Today we're working on another episode of the 50 Stack Challenge. This is 50 Stack Challenge 4, hosted by Amy at Crafty Cat. Now I'm uh, I'm about a week or so behind when she airs her episode, so I'm going to be working on week two's prompts. Every week for the next 25 weeks, she's going to be giving us two prompts, and then you make a piece of ephemera for each prompt, and the idea is to be just kind of building up your stash and to have fun with it and then to have things that you can pull from. So today's prompts are dog and grandma's attic. So first thing I did as far as trying to figure out what I wanted to decorate, I have a little tub full of unfinished bases. That is one of my most popular videos, so thank you guys. It's called uh, Making Ephemera or Making Ephemera Bases and that has gotten thousands of views. I don't remember the number anymore, but I do appreciate you guys watching that and I know I've gotten lots of good comments on there and also a few subscribers from that video. So thank you. Thank you. If you haven't seen it, I will link it down below and at the end of the video and up in the cards, depending on what your device will show you, uh, you can access it a variety of ways. But if you've been watching my channel for a long time, I suspect you've already seen it. I went through the tub of pre-made ephemera bases and what I decided to make were uh, side tucks and a belly band. And then I'd also like to make a library card. So if the first prompt here is dog. I'm going to move these doilies out of the way. And I'll show you what I've got. I actually had made some clusters a while back. And these were just from a scrap of of scrapbook paper. Honestly, I have no idea. It might have been one I picked up at the thrift, thrift store because I honestly, I don't remember buying it. But I have these cute little guys and I had been playing around because I knew I wanted to use them someday. And I made a couple of little, like it could be a tuck spot, it could just be an embellishment, whatever you want. I have this one. <laughs> this dog always makes me laugh. <laughs> and then I have this one. Now, Part of why I loved these images were because we used to have a boxer. His name was Bruiser. This looks like our current dog, Chloe, and she looks just like that when she sticks her head out of the car window. And then long ago, we had a Brittany, a tricolor Brittany. Her name was Bandit. She was black, brown, and white. And I realize this is a beagle image, but uh, she looked a lot like this, only the size of an actual Brittany. So these images also just kind of are fun for us personally, for me personally, because they remind me of my doggies. We have not ever owned a poodle, so um, this one just made it on there by default. So back to the topic at hand, I want to be decorating with these. And I'm really glad that this this uh, prompt came up because for the life of me, I was, I've been hanging on to them but not knowing what I wanted to make. So the first thing I decided, I think I'd like to make a belly band. At some point in the future, I am wanting to make a journal. Uh, the topic will be faithfulness, God's faithfulness, but I wanted to illustrate that subject using dogs because I think dogs are so faithful. You know, they, they love you no matter what. They love even rotten people. Dogs love their owners and they do not hold judgment or anything like that. They just love unreservedly. They're very faithful. They're always there. You can count on them. And so I think this will be a fun piece of ephemera to put into a future dog themed journal. Now I'm not going to do anything special or mind blowing. I just want to use these up. And this little scrap here, this belly band is from a masterboard I made at one point. I don't know when I cut it apart. And um, so I had the piece and I like the colors. I think the colors will go very nicely. Now what I do need to do is find another backing for uh, the doggy here. So let me grab an oval punch. Okay, I have my oval punch. I'm pretty sure I punched with the smaller one. Yep. It's not a scallop like these two, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So it's two and a half inch oval, and I think this was like a two inch oval. And then I have a scrap of off-white cardstock because I'm pretty sure this is the same thing that I used for those. Just gonna punch really quick a background. 
now that I do that, I think I might have had pre-punched shapes I could have used, but oh well. <laughs> and I'm just going to back this on here. Let's see, I wonder... I'm wanting to think of a way to like add texture. So I have this burlap roll that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm wondering if I should run a strip of that down as well. This is the one I used on the cluster here. I have this one that I found at a thrift store. So in case the one is too wide, I can use the other one. And let's try taking that off. I could make it a double belly band this way if I wanted to. Not sure that would work though, because when I glue these down, it's gonna come through here and then I would have to back the burlap, so I'm not sure that I necessarily want to fiddle with that. I'm just going for the texture. So should I make a band or should I do swatches? I think I like the band. And I like the color. The color just kind of comes out and you can see that there's pattern and texture behind there, but these guys then become the focal point. So I'm going to trim this down. I guess I didn't give this guy a try, but maybe I should. Maybe I should give it all fairness. <laughs> give this one a try as well. This one has a cute little design along the edge. Mm. You know, the color, the background color, what I'm seeing is that this one has a green background, this one has peach, this one has peach, but I can't really change it up because I've already glued these together. I guess we'll just live with it. I like the oval in the middle. So when I use this background, I like the green one at the top because then you see this blue. I'm just looking at the colors, how they balance. So I'll, I'm going to go with that. We're going to make a snap decision. Not going to stress over it. And which one did I like better? You know, I don't know. <laughs> probably the narrower one because I can see more of the piece behind it and I can tell that it's been um, that it's been collaged and it has lots of colors and things okay so yeah I'm just gonna go ahead and ink this up there's a little piece hanging off here that I'm gonna trim off like I said nothing earth-shattering or mind-blowing today but we're just gonna do that then I'm going to construct a library pocket out of some book page and put this cluster on there. And then I have two pieces, and two pieces closer to having a journal about faithfulness. While I'm inking, we can just chat. I have so many things to tell you guys. So first of all, I wanted to say thank you to all of my subscribers. I wanna say thank you to my longtime friends and my biggest supporters who have been watching every video faithfully, whether they really liked them or not. <laughs> thank you to Dion and Michelle, my two good, good, good friends whom I adore and love and rely on. They have been very faithful supporters of my channel the whole time. So. I really wanted to say thank you to you guys. I also want to say that I am getting close to 5,000 subscribers and so when we hit that point we're gonna have a little giveaway. I found something last year at the thrift store that's super fun and exciting and I have been saving it until this moment until we hit the 5,000 when I do that giveaway so I'm excited to do that. We've been having a ton of snow, it's January. Yesterday was Martin Luther King Day, so it's kind of crazy how we start back up at school, have a week, and then have a three-day weekend right off the bat. As a parent, as an employee, I got a little frustrated, mostly as a parent. Um, that being said, it was also really nice that the kids didn't have to go back to school like January 2nd, because that, that stinks too. <laughs> As an employee, that really hurt. <laughs> so I think it's kind of nice that they take that extra extra bit of the week, but then they end up having a three-day weekend right off the bat. I'm thinking about changing up when I go uh, when I go in, what day I go in to help my daughter in her classroom because those the Fridays I was doing that just because that seemed like a good good time. But um, 
I think maybe I might move it to Mondays. I've worked myself up a schedule for when I'm gonna film and edit and record and when I'm gonna do things around the house and when I'm gonna help her. And So it is a little flexible, which is nice. But I think I may be switching to Mondays. Now, I'm gonna take my oh-so-favorite speckle stamp. I'm gonna add a little texture here. And I should probably be doing this on a, on a background page. Crafting standing up today, so fun, love it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of getting really addicted to it. It's, um, it's really nice, truthfully, once in a while to be standing up instead of sitting down. I'll glue this together now. Yeah, I think that just gives these guys a little bit of interest. Come on. Believe it or not, I refilled this recently, but I've been doing so much gluing, it's running low again. And that is uh, art glitter glue in here, in case you're wondering. I just like that these tiny applicators seem to work better, and these little bottles are a little more manageable for me. So that's why I do that. All right. Yep, so life is getting back into a routine, which is nice. But we uh, we had a ton of snow this week. Every once in a while, we get a really big, really big snowstorm, um, snowfall. And all the way through December and into the first part of January here, we have had hardly anything, hardly any snow, hardly any anything, and... Um, it's just been, you know, it's been, we've had some gray and gloomy days, but we haven't had snowy days. And then last week, of course, because I wanted to go out and get some errands done, it decided to dump on us and it has continued to dump until we have, I think over 12 inches. Maybe we've had 24. I think collectively we've had 24 in the last week, which is more than we get in an average year. <laughs> so we're grateful, but I really hate going out in it. I'm trying to figure out which way is up, probably that one. So I'm not a fan of going out in the snow, so I've tried to stay home as much as possible, but this week I have appointments, including my dog. Dog has to go to the vet, and I had my hair appointment last week, so that was nice. But along with the snow, we've had an exceptionally cold snap. <laughs> so today, right now, it's something like 14 or 15 degrees out. Overnight was negative two. We don't, it's not untypical to get temps, but we don't get them regularly year over year. So this is a cold year. I'm glad we got the snow. I hope it goes away soon. <laughs> and I did not follow my rule about letting my glue drip over something I want to glue down. Now I have glue. I wonder if I should put them at angles. Should I do them a little cockeyed? Give them some whimsy. Oh, that works. I gotta wipe this up over here though real quick. Whimsy, whimsy is fun. Oops, come here. Don't think about it. You gotta, gotta cap the glue unless I'm wanting it to drip on something that I want, in which case then I let it work for me, not against me. And this one, I'm going to spread that out a bit. There we go. Now later I can come back if I want to add some kind of like word or a label or something. Okay, they're not very whimsical. I'm just going to put them straight. <laughs> there we go. Wipe off my fingers. Yeah, so the snow has been a, I'd like to say delightful surprise. It's not exactly delightful, but we appreciate it, and uh, and um, definitely a surprise. Comes in the surprise category. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just having a slow start to getting back into life after the holidays. I took off, took off, I didn't really take it off, I just chose not to go anywhere or do any of my regular things. Uh, the weeks of Christmas and New Year's and then last week, so 
slowly getting back into the groove. How are you guys doing? Are you guys getting back into life as usual? I uh, have, have been getting into uh, putting my scrapbooks together. Long overdue project that if I had just gotten after it would have all been done by now, but I'm just really feeling an urgency, just a big sense of urgency to get some of these projects done that I haven't haven't been able to accomplish for various reasons, whether it was health reasons for me or health reasons for my kids or their weddings and graduations and all of that stuff we've been doing, <laughs> house, moving them to house, house to house and all that stuff. So I'm like, guys, I just got to get my life together. So that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now I'm going to let this dry for a sec because it's needs to, but hey, that turned out, that turned out cute. Cuter than I was thinking. So that's good. That's nice to have those be put to use. Now, the second thing I want to do is this is two different book pages, and I want to glue them together and give them some stiffness before I make the library pocket. Because this one, this is early days when I was just playing around. It's only one layer thick, and even though it's a hem page, I think structurally over time that's going to break down and should have been reinforced, which I could still do. I could add some trim along the top. Uh, you know, when you're first starting out, for all of you who are new to junk journals, do not despair because you have to have the playtime to work on making things and to get some practice in. It's not like you're going to go out there and make a super awesome journal right off the bat unless you are a really amazing crafter or you've been doing other kinds of paper crafts that already, you know, you already have the skills built up. But if you're not used to it, I mean... Originally, the concept of a library pocket was so incredible to me. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I can't believe it. So I was playing around with it and um, just needed to practice. And some of them I liked and some of them I scrapped. And at the end of the day, it's all just paper. All just paper. So what I'm doing here is trying to mark off mark off kind of where I want it the width so I know this is three and a half inches and so I know that I want a half inch on each side so that should come out at four and a half inches and I think I'm a little off one two three four and a half close enough okay so as long as I have that now I'm gonna just trim and I, I wanted this side to show so I'm gonna trim from the back Another thing, um, since I made that video on pre-made ephemera bases, they are very handy. Not gonna, not gonna dispute that fact, but I just kind of have kind of come full circle because why do we really need to have things that are only half done in our stash? Why not just finish it? And the reason I came up with that was because I was watching Edith, Edith Ray over at Scrapbooking with me, Miss E. And um, she just finishes her pieces while she's working on them. And this this uh, challenge kind of encourages that as well. Just finish the piece while you're doing it. Uh, don't wait around to come back and decorate it per se. But on the other hand, it's nice to have these undecorated pieces. Uh oh, you know what? I trimmed that off too soon. So what I'm wanting to do is have a little, like little wings I'm going to make here. But I needed to trim half an inch off either side that way. And so the easiest way to figure that out, in my mind, is to score those half inch lines and then I can cut them where I don't want them. And so I did not, did not need to um, trim my corners quite yet. I find this thing a little awkward to score over in the corner, but We'll get there in the end, and I'm gonna, this may not be exactly a half an inch, but I'm just gonna score it so that my width here was um, three and a half inches, which is what I wanted, because when I fold these in, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to cut a notch there. I like to angle those pieces, and we're just gonna cut off this outside piece. down to where that fold is. And I'm just trying to simulate an actual library pocket because when you have one that's all flat, 
laid out and not assembled, it has like little wings. I'm just gonna fold these to the inside. And the reason I made an angle here is so that when I fold the pocket up, it doesn't leave a lot of bulk and excess, excess layers in the corner and then it, it glues very nicely. Now I can go back and do this, that's better. And the only thing I did not check is if that was deep enough to hold my embellishment. Good. So now I'm going to go ahead and ink this one real quick as well. And I'm going to use Vintage Photo on this one. I think the browns on the doggy are, are um, more to this shade. I'm getting back into the scrapbooks so there will be scrapbooking videos coming up um so <laughs> hope you don't mind but that's what I'm working on also I think it might be interesting if you guys maybe maybe this is just me being <laughs> being full of myself I don't know but again for people who are newer to paper crafting or maybe who got burned out by scrapbooking or it felt like it was too much I don't know I've always been drawn to scrapbooks and albums my mom always kept me a photograph album and then had another what we called scrapbook to put all of the paper things in like birthday cards and all that here we go I'm just putting away my my scoreboard and um, so I just always liked that and I liked thumbing through them as a kid I just thought they were so cool to thumb through those. And um, so that's what I wanted to do for my kids. Now, since I started pretty much at the beginning of the scrapbook craze, my style is completely different. It really got overdone. I'm debating, do I want a little thumb notch there or not? Maybe not. Here we go. I'm just gonna glue this on. This is an old playing card and I just, I layered it up first and then I trimmed it down to the size that I wanted. And that's all it is, it's just that piece. And then a couple of scraps, the burlap, a playing card. Let's see, and how far do I wanna glue? I can glue that whole thing, cool. Yeah, so anyway, I thought maybe, if you see how I do it, and also there's how I used to do it and then there's how I'm gonna do it, because, <laughs> Things have changed, you know? Uh, the digital age happened, so when I was first starting out, digital images were not even a thing. And then later, that was kind of how you do everything, and now there's so many options and different ways of recording your memories, and I really think the main thing is just record your memories. Write it down, who you were with, where you were, when you did it, and if you want to, what you felt about it or, you know, what was happening in the moment if it stood out to you. But that's a whole other discussion for when I do that video. Okay, so there's that. And here's the belly band. Oh, that's so cute. Thank you, Amy. These are great. This is making me think and making me get some stuff done. Okay, so now for Grandma's Attic. I will confess, I did not have a grandma. Or really, my grandparents were all gone by the time I was... 12 so I didn't really know any grandmas really and my one grandpa the one that passed away when I was 12 he was in a nursing home for like five years before that so occasionally that was my mom's dad so sometimes we'd go out to the ranch that she was raised on my grandpa was a man of many interests and he had his fingers in a lot of pies he was a businessman with varied uh a variety of things that he liked to do. So one of them was raising quarter horses. The other one was, um, he had a gas station in town, a service station. And so he ran a gas station, he had a gold mine. I don't know that he ever found any gold. If he did, he hoarded it and none of us know about it. <laughs> anyway, so I'm just dragging out some pieces here that I pulled out, things that you might find in grandma's attic. I have some doily, I have some has some uh, lace, oh, crochet lace over here. So uh, I was thinking, if I were to have a grandma and go through her attic, what might I find there? Like 
for instance, we might find old photos. That's a cute little Tim Holtz ephemera piece. I think these people are at the Eiffel Tower. Is that where they are? I don't know. There's an amusement park happening in the background because there's a Ferris wheel. So old photo might be something. Amy used a dress form on hers, and I do, I do think that if I had a grandma and I found a dress form in her attic, I would be euphoric. So what I'm wanting to do is just lay things down. Again, it's not going to be earth-shaking. Cut this out of an old Sears catalog about ladies' boots. So I don't think it's going to be mind-blowing. You might find the family radio from the 1940s up there in the attic. And could that be my grandma? It could be. This is another uh, Tim Holtz piece. Now if I do that there, she should be center stage. You might find bingo cards, you might find some lace. There's that. You might find tickets or an old watch or a compass or a gauge because grandpa probably just threw his extra projects up there. Who knows? I can make up my own grandparents since I didn't really <laughs> didn't really know them. <laughs> I can pretend they can be anything I want them to be now. Let's see. I feel like I have all the big pieces on the bottom and smaller pieces at the top and I don't want to be off balance. So I'm just going to lay it out. But this could be a piece in any kind of journal. You could have a sachet. Now these have come from a variety of packs, so please don't ask where they came from because I don't really remember. It's just stuff I've accumulated. It could be hat boxes, and if I use this, that's a washi sticker, so it's gonna melt into the background. Okay. This is kind of what Amy did too. She had a variety of things. I think hers turned out really nice. It could be an old typewriter, and I know this because we have a couple of old typewriters, so. That's another washi sticker. I just punched it out of a bigger sheet. This is a calling card, another piece of ephemera. Let's see if that goes under here. Uh, I have to like hold it and then arg. Hold it, arrange it, rearrange it. And then once we get this part figured out, then we have to Go back and layer it, actually glue it, you know? I think that's gonna go there. You can tell that's bingo. You can tell that's a compass, I hope. I don't think you necessarily have to have north paint pointing up. That's boring. I'd like to see west and east and all of them, so you know. Okay, oh, that's west and east. You can't really see north. I just realized I have my wrong glasses on. I've got the ones that I can't see up close in. <laughs> so here's an old stamp with somebody or other on it. Don't know who that guy is. Hope he wasn't a meanie. He looks kind of, he looks military, but I hope he's not a despot or a awful human. So I'm gonna kind of hide him, but I like the shade of green. And let's see. Did you find a butterfly in the attic? <laughs> I have this too. I wish this was a washi sticker because it's just gonna show white through there. And here's an old calling card, reproduction, representation. So that could go right there maybe. I'm gonna ink that one up. We have found, um, in some of the old family things from my husband's side, we have found some things like this. We have found old radios, old clocks, old typewriters, lots of old photos, and plain calling cards. That's what I like about this. This isn't one of those fancy ones. This is what your average human being <laughs> could afford when calling cards were popular. I remember, um, if any of you are Laura Ingalls fans, which I know one of you watching is, um, I remember in her books, talk her writing about when calling cards first became popular and going down to get some printed up. And that's just what you left when you went and saw your friends. Now, I want that there, but I can't see my calling card now. 
thought I wanted him layered. Maybe not. Okay, so what I gotta do is figure out my bottom layers and get to gluing. So I have a few other things, but I don't think they're gonna make it. This is a spool. I'm gonna leave that there, okay. So I'm gonna try tacking down first the bottom layers. And I still didn't change out my glasses, so it's gonna be an adventure. I had some paper scraps over here I thought might also might also be useful but let's see I kind of don't I, I'm not sure I want his angry little face <laughs> I just want the the idea of a postage stamp oh yeah picture frames this was just a random piece from an old paper piece let's see so the next one okay I need to glue down the ticket I'm gonna ink him glue him kind of on this one side because if later I decide to add lace down that edge I'd like to have the option to tuck it underneath if I want we'll see we'll see how this comes together okay that's gonna go over there it's two are gonna go there Gonna go over there. So back to what we were talking about earlier. Um, yeah, I'd like to grow to the 5,000 mark, 5,000 subbies. So if you guys can help spread the word, that would be amazing and I'd be grateful. And as soon as we get there, we can have a giveaway. That'd be great. Oh, I did wanna talk about too. So for those of you, speaking of things that kind of interfere with your life, for those of you who've been watching for a while, you know, a couple of years ago, I had an emergency eye surgery because um, I had tears in my retina on my left eye, and then I had to go back like 10, 12 weeks later and have my right eye reinforced because it didn't have tears in it yet, but he was reinforcing the weak spots. Well, I had my checkup on snowy Friday last week. And unfortunately, I have a couple of little holes in that right eye, so we have to go back and patch them up. Luckily, it won't take an eight to 10 week recovery, because I, I was like, man, I'm trying to figure out when I got another eight to 10 weeks to sit and do absolutely nothing, and I don't have it. <laughs> and he said, oh no, with this, it would be very quick and simple, and you don't have to have all that downtime. You could be back at normal activity the next day. So I was like, okay then schedule it as soon as possible. So that's coming up on February 8th, which is a Thursday. So for those of you who pray, I would appreciate your prayers, just that it goes safely. And also I have to sit perfectly still uh, while he lasers my eye. And it's, it's, um, it's definitely a challenge because if you look in the wrong spot at the wrong time, he lasers the wrong part of your eye. So it won't be, I mean, even the initial time when it was the emergency, the whole thing took like maybe 10 minutes, but it was such an intense 10 minutes that whew, <laughs> psyched myself into doing it for the second eye because I knew I needed to, but I'll tell you what, I am not looking forward to doing it again. <clears throat> so luckily it'll be quick and fast. We have to go to the Boise office, so just that everything will go smoothly, that I can sit still and look where I need to look and not, not mess up the the lasering and you know just God will guide his hands and that my eye will heal and also that maybe this could be the last time we ever do this I just it's hard to get um, psyched up for it. I I guess I thought once we did the other stuff that would be it but there can always be potential for more apparently so and what what this is due to is the fact that I have an astigmatism, which means your eyeball's not round. It's kind of a football shape. And so over time, it pulls away from the back of your head, <laughs> the back of your eye socket, basically. The place where it's supposed to be firmly attached. And um, so it's very common. I think, honestly, people with blue eyes probably have more. He hasn't said that, but I 
kind of see the trend a little bit. And I think it's just those of us with blue eyes and started out with poor vision are probably more prone to it. Um, so genetics definitely plays a role, a factor in that. And um, yeah, I just, I wanna be able to see still for the next 30 years of my life without having a major issue going blind or anything like that. So prayers that my vision will be maintained. Uh, what's the word I want? Just that hopefully this could be the last time and that my eyes will stay strong and not not keep disintegrating. <laughs> so I'm only 58. I would like to see until I die. <laughs> so anyway, so that's coming up, but don't normally talk about that kind of stuff, but it is definitely not going to be my favorite week when we get there. It'll be all right. I don't want to make it more or worse than it is. But it also means my husband, you know, has to take time off of his job. Take me, drive me there and back. I can get there. I just can't see to drive home afterward. Okay, I forgot to glue her down. Now that I did that. There we go. That's cool. I mean, it's very hodgy-podgy. It's also using up a lot of these pieces that, that um, need to be used, right? I think I told you in my last video I'm really being strict about using up all of the things that I've collected and, and um, getting the enjoyment out of using them because that's why I bought them. So there's no enjoyment in hoarding. I've been watching a lot of uh, videos again about not about getting rid of clutter and all of that stuff. So let's see. That could go there. I think that's my last thing I have to glue down. But that's good. You know, I had some other pieces here like books, a seashell collection. This was a washi sticker. It was cut off of a big sheet, and I think I got that from either Your Creative Studio or a grabby, a grabby box. I don't remember, but it was one of those freebies, and so it just had a bunch of things on the page, and I decided to cut them up and use them independently of one another. I think that was a good decision. I could still make a pocket. Probably not on camera, because we're gonna run out of time, but. There we go. There we go. So that was handy. I mean, I think there is a good balance between having things available to decorate and then having them already done. So I think my best place to start is over there with the bin over there <laughs> waiting to be decorated. So, And really, these are very quick projects. It's so nice because you know, you can just have fun with it. You don't have to put a lot of thought into it. And I didn't even use the doilies. I didn't even use some of the stuff, but that's okay. That is a-okay. It gave me, gave me enough stuff to play with. All right, so let me throw some of these stuff aside back in the bin, back in the tub. These are just little bits that, um, in fact, I might use this one. This is from an old cane company, Ephemera Pack. And on the packaging, you know how they always show, that says things I love to remember. You know how on the packaging they always show um, what's in the kit? So I just cut them off the back of the package. So that could be, that could go right there. That's cute. So anyway, I have all these miniatures of, <laughs> of the same giant ephemera. There, things I love to remember. Cute. It almost looks like an arrow, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm having fun playing around with working on the scrapbooks and doing this and trying to just get things put together in my life. And I just really would like life to stay out of my way right now. <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop giving me things that either distract me or keep me from being able to do the things I wanted to do. Okay, here we go. 
all ready to be put in a journal at some point and used up. I really do like how that looks with everything. That's cute. It's pretty. It looks very grandma-ish. Fun, fun. And then later I can make a journal card to go in there and nice to use up these little images that I wasn't sure what I was going to do with before and always get a chuckle out of that dog. Okay, so that is it for today. I appreciate you guys watching me. I hope you'll give it a try. Use the prompts. And next time, I don't know if I'll just go ahead and do her next week or not. Because um, like I said, I'm a week behind, but I don't want all my videos in a row to be the same topic either. So we'll see what we do. So until next time, be inspired, do something creative today, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye now. Have a lovely week.